times are changing. And Africa is now the world's youngest continent. Africa is the youngest continent. Majority of the population are under 35. What are we doing about the youth? Because the youth constitute one of the uh, important pillars that we're focused on. Let me say the youth are not only the future of this region, but uh, I believe we are the present and future. Uh, if we define what do we mean by young people, there is this external perception that young people are a homogeneous group. This is not the reality. We have also young people in vulnerable settings. We have young people uh, with disabilities and we have foremost young women. But again, a population that is ill-skilled and unemployed can be a demographic curse. So this is the challenge. But the opportunity is in us trying to convert this demographic dividend into opportunities. But also young people as being the largest population, they are our biggest asset. Because the richness of nations is not in stones but in its people. It's never been more <coughs> important to develop our youth into confident and transformational leaders that can navigate Africa through the incoming economic and political climates. Africa's youth are faced with growing concerns about how to thrive in their peoples. And that's where Unique Africa comes in. Founded in 2017, we are Africa's flagship youth leadership program, following the youth's greater demands in expanding our work from the East African community to the continent. There are many challenges facing young people on the African continent. The biggest one of them is that each and every one of the young people in Africa have the desire to become a leader. I think investment should be made more to build the capacity of young people in Africa to become effective leaders. Under globalization, the world is small. The whole world, the outside there, has skills. We need to equip our youth with the requisite skills so that they participate properly, even in, in global interaction. And this means that we need to do more to create economic opportunities and work opportunities for young people. ULEAD for me represents that opportunity for young people to first of all think about their problems collectively and then develop, if it be um, disruptive strategies, to take action on addressing those challenges. The summit is not, not just a three days or four or five days event for young people to come and chit chat and go home. Whatever they are saying is influencing our one-year work, what we call the post-summit agenda. With now more than 10,000 alumni and over Hello everyone. Hello everyone. An active partner-led work in all five major African regions, a one young Hello. Africa is our vision. We have a great vision. Hello. We have 150 My delegates in person, 20,000 virtually, but this is not to me the only success indicator. The success indicator is ensuring that all these 20,000 young people virtually Virtually provide inputs and meaningful engage through government. My name is Silar Mohammed from Ethiopia. All suggestions are then incorporated into our post summit agenda. Look at 2017, just East Africa coming together, and now thousands of African young people. Unit Summit 2021. We are proud to announce that we are going continental, coming together as a one young Africa. And we want actually to break the borders. The CFTA is here. We want African young people to come together under your lead summit platform, trade together across the borders, innovate together across the borders, and create jobs as well as prosper together. That's what drove us to become, you know, one young Africa. We have the potential and the capacity to do so. From 8 to 12 November 2021, we are hosting Africa's largest hybrid summer ever with your leads Africa's patron, His Excellency Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete, former president of Tanzania as chief convener, and Honorable Dr. Peter Matuki, the EAC Secretary General as co-convener. The theme is the future of Africa, creating jobs, feeding and housing the world's youngest continent. I call upon policymakers, development partners, the private sector, media, civil society, and other stakeholders to be part of and support the staff and community in convening this year's ULIT Summit. It will attract participation 
from all the partner states of the EAC and indeed the continent. I thank you. Asandeni sana. See you in Arusha. Tujenge vijana wetu. Since 2017, ULIT Summit, as popularly known, is jointly convened annually by the East African Community and MS Training Center for Development Cooperation in Arusha, Tanzania, in collaboration with a myriad of partners. COVID-19 is both a blessing and a curse, equally. We have seen how the COVID pandemic has hit very hard young people. And this is why you lead Africa. We we'll bring together more than 15,000 people on a single platform because travel is restricted, but more people come together through the internet, courtesy of COVID-19. We are welcoming a virtual and physical audience from all African countries together on the same platform. Nonetheless, COVID-19 has reduced the opportunities for young people. Young people have lost jobs, and COVID-19 pushes us beyond the boundary to innovate and create jobs that we have lost using COVID-friendly mechanisms such as online platforms, as well as increased cooperation between and among young people across the borders, especially under the CFTA, which regards that trade should happen beyond borders of any country. The 2021 summit will be delivered in the form of thematic forums, the Under 40 Political Leaders Forum, which examines current representative democracy models. The Under 40 Business Leaders Forum assesses the existing environment for doing business. So it is important to engage and involve youth from initial uh, discussion about our drive uh, to promote continental free trade area. The Arusha debate is infused into your lead summit to generate insights into how to make social and economic development a reality. Yes, so the Arusha debate um, is being convened by ourselves, MSTCDC. Uh, as you know, we're quite um, uh, curious, but also propagate uh, pan-Africanism and knowledge that is homegrown and bred. Arusha hosts a number of higher education institutions, and uh, it's the right place for hosting the Arusha debates. The Tanzanian government has been so keen under the leadership of Our Excellence Samia Sulu Hassan in getting all the youth participate. The Arusha Peace Model showcases models that promote the role of youth in peace building. The Gender Equality Forum discusses ways to dismantle the structural causes at the root of gender inequality. East Africa to Bonge, a joint flagship initiative of ULIT Africa and Kenya Young Parliamentarians Association, KYPA, to foster young leaders' legislative enlightenment. ULIT Summit 2021 Key Milestones Launch of the East African Youth Agenda Unveiling the inaugural EAC ULIT Fellowship Launch of the Youth Governance Architecture Study Series Unveiling the Elected Young Leaders' Performance and Cooperation Peer Review Mechanism launch of the Arusha debate through the inaugural Arusha debate session. There are so many opportunities for partnership and ways to work with us or contribute financially to our cause. Contact us. You can also connect with us through our social media channels at One Young Africa. You lead Summit 2019 is the Africa that we want. And I really appreciate you lead Summit for giving us platform on how we can build a collective power to create a sustainable movement that will help us create change in our society. So I'm very, very happy to participate in ULIT Summit 2019. ULIT Summit is really awesome. ULIT Summit Youth Power. ULIT Summit is empowering. ULIT Africa, a one young Africa where dreams are born and youth become leaders.
shit, we out, man, are we, man? We're the pillars, we're the future, here we are, let's join together. With ability to change communities, with love, with peace, to respond to how I need to call for unity. Africa, hear me cry, never leave me, leave me alone. Has a sea light and a brighter future, let's join hands for youth and women. Let's join hands for youth and so women. Shariki magaribi kaskazini na kusini hata na kati twaje pamoja ili tufanye nini Good afternoon, Moses uh, uh, Ivan. Good afternoon. Uh, Moses, I understand uh, some of our members are cannot join. Could you allow them in, please? Come off your connection. Come off your zoom. And even mute your speaker. Um, John Bosco, Mr. John. Yes, yes, Hello. yes. Yes, Hello. it's being worked. It's being worked on. Yeah, currently uh, even my, my, my team, my staff cannot access. Hmm? Yes, it's being worked on, sir. Just Hello, everyone. Minutes. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, welcome. I am from Somalia. Because we were making sure that we have all our microphones muted. Yes, welcome, Said from Somalia. And good morning and good afternoon, African youth, and greetings from ULID Africa. So today I'm extremely excited to be moderating the continental virtual launch of the AFCFTA continental scoping study, including the launch of the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council and of the Africa under 40 CEOs network. My name is Sod Fadaji. I'm strategic and advisor for global Africa. And on behalf of the ULID Africa Secretariat and our mother organizations, MS Training Center for I'm sorry, um, and the East African community, I warmly welcome the distinguished guests, the ladies and gentlemen, and the youth of this virtual event. Please 
share using our chat box your name you and we also want to keep the fire alive in our social media channels so please share your thoughts and be part of the conversation in others platform and AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Accelerator on Facebook, on Twitter. And do not forget to use the hashtag of this conversation, AFCFTA Youth Inclusion. I think my team in the meantime is sharing all the links. So please, we look forward also to seeing you all in our social media channels. Allow me to introduce you a bit to our work and what we are going to launch today through a video which will be shared by my colleagues. This is where the ideas of young people can begin snowballing. We need to get into technological innovation. And uh, since 2021, investors have thrown $940 million into technology companies in Africa. So technology is the way to go. What is your ideal Africa that you wish to have? Africa which supports the youth because the youth are the innovative and uh, they can move Africa. An Africa driven by business, trade and investment. It's a united Africa, one Africa by Africans and for Africans. I want the FCFTA to be for the young people and driven by the young people. By East Africa, build East Africa. That is the brand we need to put across. That is the song we should be singing as youth. Mine it is Africa that is borderless. I think it's important to start to aim low, to build your business, um, to have some experience and then be um, confident enough to go beyond from your village to the next town, uh, to the region. East Africa is a home of uh, close to almost 200 million people. And if you are to go and design a product, one product, however small it is, you'll be assured of 200 million people. If you are selling that product for one dollar, yeah, and you are able to get that market. That's the money you'll be able to make. You can make Africa the factory of the world. It is possible. I feel the fire already as we go into the launch. And before diving into our two-part program, I welcome Madame McKenna Mobobia, Executive Director of MS Training Center for Development Cooperation for the welcoming remarks. McKenna, the floor is yours. Welcome. Um, thank you, Sonifa. Good afternoon. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is McKenna Mobobia, the Executive Director at um, MSTCDC. And I just want to say Karibuni Sana. Um, and I just want to say really thank you for creating time today to witness um, this very critical event as the young of uh, the young people of Africa make strides in driving the agenda for the Africa we want. Let me start by thanking the EAC Secretary General, Dr. Mathuki, and his team for the good working relationship. Um, we are enjoying between the two institutions. Thanks for choosing MSTCDC as a East Africa's a strategic partner on youth engagement and empowerment. This partnership is making EAC a role model in the continent, especially for the rest of the regional economic communities on young people's engagement. I want to thank His Excellency uh, Wamakele Meni, the uh, after Secretary General for the support he has given us so far extended to our work. 
we do also take it, we do not take it for granted, sir, that you, I, in fact, and um, endorsed our continental study uh, by offering the forward for the report. You also supported us last year in November uh, with uh, three senior officials of the secretariat that actually came all the way to Arusha um, to support us in the uh, after continental boot, uh, boot camp for policy uh, makers, young business leaders, and you read summit. We want to say thank you, and we look forward to a continued support for us. Today, we are witnessing, what we are witnessing is a demonstration of where, what young people can be and do if well understood, supported, and guided. Our partnership with East Africa is a fruitful example of what multi-stakeholders collaboration with the government and stakeholders and non-stakeholders can achieve. The study being launched today sets a pace and offers guidance to policymakers, development partners, and other actors on how best uh, to work with young people, their aspirations in mind, and indeed incorporate young people's needs into their policies and programs. The two structures being unveiled today, the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on AFTA and the Africa Under 40s CEOs Network are a demonstration that young people can organize themselves and lead the way towards achieving Agenda 2060, the Africa we want. I cannot end without thanking the ESC <coughs> Youth Ambassadors Platform members and the URID Secretariat who form our joint youth engagement team. What we are witnessing today is a result of their exemplary commitment, tireless efforts and sleepless nights spent each day that passes with a drive to give the best to Africa youth. We are grateful to you, our dear team. We are very proud of you. We say keep it up and we are committed to supporting you to achieve the Africa we want. I want to say karibuni tena and wishing us an excellent afternoon. Thank you, Sodifa. Thank you very much, Makena, for welcoming us and for officially kicking off this continental virtual launch. Uh, now I would like to hand over to the representatives of our, of our continental collaborating entities of the AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Accelerator Project, who will be providing brief remarks as we head towards the launch. Um, I would like just to check with my colleagues whether uh, all the collaborating entities are online. Um, team, can you help me check if most, um, sorry, if our team is online? Okay, can we invite um, John Yuans? Is he online? <coughs> okay, so maybe let's start with uh, Sebastian Ivan Segawa, ESC Youth Ambassador Platform. Sebastian, are you online for your remarks? Yes, so far. Um, Welcome, Seba. Thank you so much. And uh, good afternoon, Africa, and uh, more specifically, young people in East Africa. Like I introduced, my name is Sebastian, Segawa Ivan Sebastian, and I am uh, calling in and speaking in from uh, Kampala, the capital of Uganda. I am the regional coordinator of the ESC Youth Ambassadors Platform, and I am here to just share uh, in, a, in, in about two minutes uh, a little snippet of what we as collaborating entities on this project uh, performed. First, for those of you that, have, that are outside Africa, the ESC Youth Ambassadors Platform is the youth engagement uh, initiative of the East African community, and it is under the political affairs department of the ESC, and uh, this is within the framework of the Nyerere Center for Peace. And the platform's mandate is to foster participation of young people, of the youthful East Africans, 
to active participation within the integration agenda in the ESC. I want to say that uh, the ESC now boasts to be the regional economic bloc that has the biggest number of young people in the region. And as the representatives of these young people, we find it overwhelming, but also an opportunity for us to represent them and to ensure that their interests are uh, considered by the policy makers and the powers that be. Uh, so far, first of all, uh, towards the contribution of the Ambassador's platform on, uh, I, I think someone is uh, trying to speak, if you could just let me conclude my remarks. The Youth Ambassador's platform, thank you. The Youth Ambassador's platform was uh, very honored to be a collaborating entity on, the, on this uh, continental project. We did a couple of things with uh, colleagues that, <clears throat> with colleagues that were outside the continent. It was a good opportunity for us to meet representatives of uh, other regional blocks. But most importantly, within the ESC, among other things, we carried out extensive consultations, and these were open consultations that uh, had us contribute towards creating this report. The consultations involved young people of the East African community but also government actors and, uh, and ministers of trade and uh, people in line with the AFCFTA. I want to say that uh, trade, generalized trade or um, uh, an agreement or an area of trade is not new to the ESC because uh, the ESC has already set precedence for regional economic blocks. We do have the customs union and uh, the AFCFTA was indeed in line and in tandem with what the uh, customs union of, of and the common market of the ESC provide for. It was therefore uh, not, not a conversation that we were introducing anew, but rather to see exactly how young people in the ESC can compare not with the existing framework of the common market protocol and the customs union and how we can uh, venture into having opportunities in the ESC. And of course, the outcomes were overwhelming and uh, I don't want to. I think we are facing a bit of technical challenges, uh, but definitely we, we are happy. Seba, are you back? It would go to the next person. Okay, great. So uh, as we wait for Seba, but, and I also understand that uh, our collaborating entities are slowly joining us. Um, I would like to start by going into uh, the second part of the launch. And don't worry, participants, we have allocated slots for question and answers and also to hear from you. I will try my best to make this session as participatory as possible. But before doing that, it will be good to hear a bit more about what's the study about? Um, what is the vision of the Council? And what should we expect from the CEOs and the Entrepreneur Network? And I think it will be good to start with our director, Mr. Ivan Atuyambe. Uh, to quickly uh, present to us the outcomes of the continental study and a bit more about our work. The correct, you are not signing in with the correct email.
Daj, what is happening? We can't uh, hear Ivan. Yes, uh, one second. I think they are um, just preparing the presentation and they should be on in one minute. Hello, Sutra. This is John Johannes. Hi, John, and welcome. Um, so you. I'm Thank giving you. to I'm giving to Ivan the opportunity to present, and then I will go back to all our collaborating entities. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks. Wonderful. Right. Hello. Okay, great. So we are setting up the presentation. John, welcome. Um, let me get back to, let's start with our continental entities. Johans, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Great, welcome. So we were actually giving a slot to our collaborating entities for uh, remarks before we head into the core of our program. So please welcome. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I, I was at the back stage. Uh, it seemed our participants are many, and the Zoom was running out the capacity. But that is a, a great sign, indicating that the young people are also interesting in, in the work that we, we are doing. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate and greet excellencies and ladies and gentlemen in the call. Uh, my greeting from the Nile Youth Development Action one of the collaborative entities. And uh, from the beginning, I would like to congratulate the ULI team and all the collaborative entities for the work well done. And that is a very clear indication that young people have the ability to contribute to the realization of Agenda 263 through implementing the flagship programs like the African Continental Free Trade Area. I'm representing the Nile Youth Development Action, which is a grassroots organization focusing on advancing the socioeconomic development in the Nile Basin countries. And we are glad to partner with ULIT and other collaborating entities to coordinate uh, consultation and data collection in the North and Horn of yeah, Africa. Crazy. Yeah. And so, we, we understand that at some point, we feel you were forgotten at the initial stage. Johan, sorry, can you unmute yourself? You're muted. And please, everyone, can you keep your microphones off for it's very difficult? Thank you. Uh, am I audible, uh, Sutra? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I was uh, continuing with my remark and I lost the sound somewhere. But uh, I was indicating to all the excellencies and participants that when we are doing consultation in the North and all of Africa region, we understand that at some point, 
youth were forgotten at the initial negotiation process of the AFCFTA. And we understand the phenomena is still largely undisputable up to now. But nevertheless, here comes a product made by the youth and for the youth to guide the inclusion policy at different levels, at the national level, at the regional level, and at the continental level. And this is our report. The report marked the beginning of our journey toward massive sensitization of our young people to take advantage of the AFCFTA. And we realize effective dissemination is a key in implementing the AFCFTA at grass level, at our national level. And also with inclusion of the young people, young people will be able to take ownership in implementing it because if we are going to the grassroots level, at our countries, we know the majority are young people. And if Africa want to industrialize, we don't want to exclude the young entrepreneurs who are striving to get change in the societies. So we need to consider the small and medium-sized enterprises. And this report clearly indicates recommendation that our government can benefit from it on how to engage young people in implementation of the I think there is a technical challenge uh, with John's internet. Um, but thank you so much for your remarks, John. And we really extend our gratitude to the entire Nile Youth Development Action, which is one of our partners. And now I would like to hand over to Shepo Magoma from the Southern Africa Youth Forum. Uh, welcome, Shepo, for your remarks. Yes, uh, thank you. I, I don't know if I'm audible. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Yes, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it's quite a pleasure to be with you guys. Um, really honored uh, from Sayo. Uh, we are really honored to be part of this great initiative. Um, so I would like to just greet everyone, uh, all the excellencies and partners, uh, fellow compatriots and fellow comrades. I would also like to congratulate uh, our continental partners and members who have contributed greatly to this project. And today we get to bear this fruit. Uh, I believe this is the beginning of a life of holding journey, especially for youth uh, in, in, in the region. Um, just to also touch base on what we do, um, the South African Youth Forum um, is a coordinating body and a regional platform for youth organization in SADC. Uh, we continually work with SADC Secretariat and uh, we are youth represented for SADC CNGO. Uh, we believe that uh, together with our key stakeholders, uh, the SADC Secretariat and the SADC Business Council, we are committed towards uplifting uh, people in the South African region. And we collectively believe that uh, the benefits of the FTA as shown in this report uh, it gives a multiple and present opportunity for African. Uh, countries to raise the incomes and facilitate trash measures. And we believe that this initiative will further support uh, the cross mobility uh, development agenda that is quite necessary for us to enhance uh, the long-term growth in African countries and also actionable opportunities to harness the demographic dividend. You know, the potential for youth is really recognized and this payable agreement will also succeed. And when we check a lot of our activism as a cluster, it's always been centered around entrepreneurship in the wake of the rising unemployment in the region, where we believe that innovation and entrepreneurship can play a vital role to alleviate uh, the overgrowing trends of unemployment. And we firmly believe that SMEC and, and, and youth-led businesses have a major role to play. And our activism has always been shown uh, predominantly with the use or uh, with the utilization of the EFTA. We do have a broad range of activities that we are really uh, looking forward um, to. And this today present a very hopeful uh, journey that showcases um, the commitment around youth-led organization in the region that are centered around improving the lives of young people. And we are very much happy and delighted uh, by the fact that uh, indeed young people do deserve a seat in the table. And when they're given an opportunity, they are able to utilize it promptly. And today 
with this launch marks a very fruitful journey for the region. And we are quite excited and we're embodied by our spirit of the Southern African youth. And we believe that uh, continentally, more collaboration will foster some of the challenges and will, it is now working us towards uh, what we call Agenda 2063. And it will also facilitate for more engagement. And lastly, I would like to thank everyone. And this is quite a phenomenal journey and instrumental uh, step for us as a region. And we are quite excited for the next development of this game. Uh, for that, uh, as a cluster and uh, as SIOF and our key partners and everyone with you lead, we would like to congratulate everyone that has played a vital role. The journey does not end here. It is now the beginning of a life fulfilling journey that will assist the youth in the region. Uh, for that, uh, I would like to say thank you. Thank you very much, Shepo, for your remarks. And we thank the entire team of the Southern Africa Youth Forum for being such a great partner. And I would like to apologize. We have had a bit of technical challenges, but now we are back. We are in full force. And I see our continental entities joining us, but I also see that the number of participants is increasing. Welcome everyone. I see a lot of fire in our chat. So let me now um, quickly go and welcome Sharon Onconi, the Executive Director of J Act. Uh, Sharon, welcome. Can you hear me? Okay, it seems that uh, Sharon is not online. Um, I also see that the Seba is back. Sebastian, can you hear us? You were doing your remarks about the ESC. Yes, yes I'm sorry, I can hear you. Yes, we would love to hear what you were saying before you went off. So please continue your remarks. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Um, I uh, already expressed what uh, ESU Youth Ambassadors Platform does, and I, I, I was, I was uh, just uh, extending to say that two things as to why we joined this conversation of the report, because uh, we understood that one, there was uh, a need to ensure that uh, young people and women were included in the protocols of the EFCFTA. And the second, we needed to ensure that the gap of the information about the AFCFT and the young people had to be bridged. And uh, today, a lot of work has gone into creating the, uh, the report. And uh, we hope, and uh, well knowing that uh, we have uh, officials from the AFCFT Secretariat, we do have officials from the ESC Secretariat. We do hope that uh, the outcomes of this report, the voice of the young people that is reflected in this report is taken seriously and is integrated used as a benchmark or a yardstick to inform policy in uh, all these levels of, uh, of leadership at the REC and the African Union level. That is our, our, our hope. And as ESC Youth Ambassadors, we still remain committed towards supporting all work that will go towards benefit young people in business, in politics, in peace and security, and all disciplines and walks of life. I want yet again, so if I know I already used part of my time, but I just want to say that uh, it has been a good opportunity to work with ULID Africa, to work with other uh, collaborating entities in other regional economic blocks of the ESC. And uh, I want to stop here and say that uh, we are looking forward to uh, a, 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 a very great launch and uh, most importantly, the outcomes being considered by the powers that be. Thank you. Thank you very much, Seba. And yes, we are a bit limited with time, but I'm sure that um, we will have many other opportunities, not only to highlight the work of the ESC app, but also to hear a bit from our participants. Everyone is introducing themselves into the chat box and I see a bit of hands up. Please just wait for me a couple of more minutes and then I promise I will open the floor for remarks and questions. Um, I would like now to, um, first of all, thank once again our collaborating entity.
it is for being a full force and for your greatest commitment to achieve a prosperous and integrated Africa. We haven't heard from Youth Hub Africa and J Act, but I'm sure that at some point uh, we may chip in the representatives or even the directors if they will manage to join. Um, and then uh, now we are heading into the heart of our launch and we cannot do so without first hearing more about the continental study, the, the independent continental youth advisory council on AFCFTA and the under 40 CEOs and entrepreneurs network. Um, before getting into the second part of our launch, I was wondering if the team is ready with the second video, just to get a bit of more understanding of where uh, these events are coming from, what was our journey. Franklin? My name is Daniel Akindiche and I am from Nigeria. My name is Rod Kedogda, I'm from South Sudan. My name is Etienne Timothy George, I'm from Uganda. My name is Emolot Alan David, I am the national coordinator of the African New Charter Hustlers, Uganda chapter. I think networks should be created where young people can collaborate and partner on issues that have to do with trade for the prosperous and sustainability of the US. I think the implementation can take place. People having ideas which are bigger than their country. So the AFCFTA gives them an opportunity to spread these ideas across the globe and improve and ground the economy of Africa as a continent. As one young Africa, we say yes to one Africa market. <laughs> we are looking forward to having your support you, the member states, to ensure we implement, we fully domesticate this trade agreement. Asanteni sana. Thank you for the video. And with this, I would like to welcome Ivana Tuyambe, director of ULID Africa to provide a summary of the key findings from the continental study. Um, and then after the remarks of Ivan, that's where I'll be opening the floor for questions and answers. Welcome, Ivan. Uh, good afternoon, uh, friends and uh, young people from around Africa. And uh, I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Uh, my name is Ivan Atiambe, and um, I will walk us through uh, the ULIDs in summary and uh, why and how we are here today. Uh, we are here today mainly to uh, share the results of our continental study. Many of you may be already so much aware about ULID, but uh, in summary, we aim at uh, connecting young people across the continent and their initiatives for the change that we need in Africa. And um, His Excellency Jakaya Kikwete, the former president of Tanzania, is a patron of our initiative. And it's uh, a, a joint initiative of Training Center for Development Cooperation and uh, the East African Community Secretariat. And um, there, briefly, about the ESC Youth Ambassadors Platform, it's an initiative of the East African community to engage with young people on uh, issues and matters of regional integration. And we work uh, as one team between the ULID and the ESC Youth Ambassadors Platform 
to drive ESC's youth engagement agenda. And now we have, uh, using this model, uh, we are inspiring similar work across the continent through other regional economic communities partnerships. And um, we work along uh, youth in politics, which we look at building the capacity of young leaders in public service and increasing their voices, and also covering issues around peace and security and conflict transformation for young people. We work also around youth in business, in which area we look at uh, capacity of young business leaders um, and uh, to, to look at uh, how enabling the policy environment is for them to flourish economically and to pursue economic opportunities and decent work. And uh, that is mainly why we are here today uh, going forward. Our pillars of work on youth in business uh, include two clusters, a cluster that looks at youth enterprise um, and innovation and uh, this is where we have an Enterprise Acceleration Award program. And uh, cluster two looks at uh, youth and trade policy, uh, which looks at trade, uh, trade policy and trade facilitation for young people. And currently this is where we run a, a program on uh, AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Accelerator with uh, support from the GIZ African Union Office, which has uh, enabled us to produce the report we are launching today. And um, looking at um, the report we are launching today comes from our initiative that uh, is supported by the GIZ African Union Office on uh, FCFT Youth Inclusion Accelerator. And uh, it's a two year project. And we are looking at um, so far <clears throat> how are young people participating in the FCFTA processes and what can be done by policymakers, private sector to maximize the youth participation uh, agenda. So we are launching today uh, one of the major outcomes of this project, which is uh, the FCFTA Youth Inclusion Continental Study. But uh, before that, uh, I would like to say, as Sodfo was saying, we work with a vibrant community of young people across the continent who have uh, enabled this project to succeed across the continent, in the West Africa, in the Southern Africa, in the East Africa. Uh, so these are the, the ones that we are speaking before. I won't run through the list again, but um, we have uh, all the five regions covered courtesy of partnerships with the vibrant young people's organizations across the continent. And uh, today, as I said, we are launching a major outcome of this uh, landmark project, which is uh, a continental study report on uh, FCFTA youth inclusion, making the FCFTA promises a reality for African youth. And this study looked at capacity gaps policy constraints and prospects for increasing young people's participation. And um, we will look at uh, the start objectives, who we talked to, what we asked, how we asked it, what we have heard and learned. And then finally, we will also look at how we are taking forward the findings of the study. In terms of whom we talked to, we talked to African youth, especially with those interested in business and those interested in public affairs, 18 to 35 years were the target. We talked to 20 young people across the continent. We also talked to government representatives, about six across the continent. These are trade experts, particularly from government, we talked to regional economic communities representatives such as COMESA, EAC, and the FCFTA secretariat was also involved as well as the African Union uh, Trade Department and other policy organs about Toro. We spoke with the APEX bodies, the East African Business Council and others, and we talked to civil society as well as development partners. <clears throat> and this is a summary of um, the distribution of who we have spoken with across the continent, also uh, how countries and regions have participated. Uh, all of the African, African Union member states participated in the study, 
all the countries were represented and all the regions were represented, Central, Southern, North and Horn, West Africa and East Africa. A total of 20,000 at least. What we have asked, mainly we were looking at, um, have you heard about the FCFTA? And we wanted to know uh, if yes, uh, how have you heard about it? And then we went into tracing the footprint of youth participation in FCFTA negotiation processes in phase one, particularly. And uh, then we wanted to uh, find out if youth have any platforms that enable them to participate in FCFTA implementation so far. And then uh, we asked through, this is how we asked, we asked through uh, newspapers online, social media pages, and um, we also, we had discussions with friends, colleagues, experts, and uh, as we said, some uh, government and uh, regional economic communities uh, representatives, and mainly also young people, and how they organize. We did online surveys disseminated through social media platforms and networks of partners and researchers. We did run public opinion polls and disseminated them via Twitter and Zoom in webinar tools. Uh, we had expert focus group discussions, and we also have five African regional consultations um, and uh, one continental high level uh, virtual consultations hosted via Zoom and also streamed live across our social media platforms. And uh, the key findings show that um, there is a huge information deficit, whereas young people have heard about the uh, FCFTA, but they have heard about it through social media, not really formal intentional uh, arrangements to reach out to them and explain or let them know about the agreement. And uh, therefore, uh, they do not know enough and uh, they do not uh, understand the agreement. And then secondly, that existing frameworks of the FCFTA may not necessarily be yet inclusive for young people, especially looking at the structures that traditionally take care of young people in government uh, the youth councils, young parliamentarians, ministries of youth and others, including even Apex business bodies, they are not yet uh, at the accommodative of young people. Therefore, it's a challenge. It's, it's a sort of a structural inclusion gap that we witnessed during our inquiries. And um, we also find that um, of course, among other uh, challenges, that um, there is a, a capacity issue. Yeah, there is a capacity issue in terms of navigating the enabling environment, navigating the enabling environment. So there are a number of factors that we call hindering or enabling factors that we found out. So we have recommended key actions that need to be taken uh, by policymakers development partners and other actors like the private sector. So for example, we recommend that um, efforts be put in place to popularize the FCFTA among young people. They don't know the agreement, they have had a bit of it about it, but they don't know it, so we need to teach it. We need to popularize it. We need to build knowledge about it. Uh, secondly, uh, we looking at this journey we've taken, we discovered that um, there is no baseline for understanding the extent to which young people are participating in the process so far. And uh, to address this gap, we recommend that uh, an AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Index be constructed so that annually it can be published to measure as a, as a sort of a part of a monitoring and evaluation mechanisms that are being put in place, uh, a youth inclusion index. And we have already started working on this and partners who are interested in this, please uh, reach out to us. We have early thoughts on it and we are already developing. Um, that, those are some of the key recommendations that we are putting forward. 
And then we are not sleeping. Since the study was concluded, we have also been trying to put in place response mechanisms and initiatives to address those gaps. For example, on the information capacity deficit, we undertook the continental FCFTA bootcamp uh, for policymakers and uh, young business leaders last year in November. And it was themed around how can Africa's young entrepreneurs and innovators make the FCFTA magic happen. And uh, a major outcome of this continental bootcamp was the formation of the independent uh, Continental Youth Advisory Council on FCFTA Ekoyaka, which you will hear about just briefly and shortly after me. The second one, we are looking at the, uh, the information and uh, popularization gap. So we have also put in place advocacy, networking and mentorship platforms. For example, the Africa Under 40 CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network, which we are launching today, are some of the measures as, as follow-up mechanisms to the study's findings to addressing these gaps. And um, so far, I want to stop there and uh, probably next welcome the colleagues from the Under 40 Business Leaders Forum and the Koyaka for their, um, for their part as those of um, uh, initiatives are put in place. Thank you once again for listening to me. Thank you, Ivan, but please don't run away because I see already the chat is on fire. There are questions for you. There is keen interest in actually knowing where they could find the study. So I know that we're running a little bit out of time, but I would like to open the floor for two questions addressed to Ivan. So please use the tools that we have on Zoom. Raise your hand and I will give you Okay, yes. Can you use? Okay, let me start with uh, uh, Junior Nuandida. Nuandida, you have literally 30 seconds for your question to Ivan. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, good, good evening from those in uh, East Africa. And thank you all for this. I'm Junior Nuandida, Director of a group for things limited uh, supply and export of fresh fruits and vegetables from Uganda. Uh, so I'm inquiring, number one, how does one get to or get involved with these committees, uh, networks, ambassador things? Because I just got to, to know about these things on Twitter the other day. I, I didn't know that all this information was there, all these programs was there, were there. So maybe there is a need to do more about information sharing and dissemination. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Junior. So your question is, in brief, how does someone get involved with these different initiatives? Ivan, very quickly, your 30 seconds response. Um, thank you very much. And I have heard um, two things. One, how can they find the study? Um, the study is on our website already, and uh, the link is going to be shared by our uh, tech support team and uh, management team on uh, this very chat room right now. So you can open the link and uh, visit our website and see the study and download for yourself a copy. Uh, thank you very much. And now, in terms of this question that Comrade, uh, I don't remember the name, the Comrade asked, um, we are up and running. Our platforms, as a, uh, you have got the information from the right channel. You know we are in the dot .com, uh, .com generation. Information is online. So this time we are not able to organize physical events and um, trips. So the best way to find information is where you have found it, as you say, online. Follow us on uh, social media at One Young Africa or over on Twitter, Facebook, etc. Information is there almost every day. That's our business. And get in touch with us on uh, emails. Uh, the team is also going to share the emails for more information. But he, again, as he has rightly said, we are working with mainly the East African community and uh, the African Union, FCFTF Secretariat and uh, other partners to make sure that uh, these opportunities and information 
are always going to be made available and accessible to all African young people who are intrigued and uh, active. If you are not active, you may not find it. So that's all I could say for now, so far. Thank you, Ivan. We take the last question from Rachel Majeje. You have really 30 seconds, and Ivan, 30 seconds for your response. Um, hello, thank you very much. Uh, please unmute yourself, Rachel. Yes, can you hear me now? Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much, Ivan, for the great presentation. Really, really insightful. My only question to you, because I only have 30 seconds, was uh, when we were talking about youth inclusion, and I know even in the group of youths in itself, um, there, there, there are a lot of factors. Um, what has the report done in terms of making um, this platform and, and making this agreement inclusive of uh, youths with disabilities, or maybe youths coming from different educational backgrounds who may not have had um, much education on business and trade and even for um, gender inclusivity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. And this is such a great question. It's been a little bit our uh, purpose, but I let Ivan respond to you in really 30 seconds and apologies. I think this subject requires more time, but we are running a bit out of time. Ivan? Yeah, thank you very much, Rachel. And uh, of course, um, if the questions coming in the chat room, we may get an opportunity to discuss them along the way. This is wonderful. And uh, Rachel, when we talk about the AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Index, when you look at uh, the matrix we have developed for the AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Index, it, uh, it actually looks at an intersectionality of the youth groups in their social groupings and any other affiliations and, um, and identities. So the index is the only way that we can track the participation and benefiting levels of all social groupings of youth yes. in the FCA journey. So that's how we hope that this tool is going to help us to address your concerns. Otherwise, yes. there is no way, uh, without a baseline and without a tool, we cannot, and you are right, but the index is going to address this gap and we welcome partners to work with us on this. Wonderful, Thank wonderful. Thank you so much for that. I look forward to the reports. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'm not sure if Ivan, Mr. Onen, and all the speakers, you can see how many hands are up. This shows how young people are craving for questions and to dive into this subject. And I'm sorry to be the bad person to cut this, but I think it will be very interesting also to hear from the Independent Council. And so as part of the overall AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Accelerator Project, we have hosted in November 2021 a bootcamp for policymakers and business leaders. And as an outcome, it came into life the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on AFCFTA. So I want to welcome Emolot Alan David and Feben Tamara to tell us more about it. Emolot and Feben, welcome, and you have four minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sodfa. I don't know if Feben, Feben, are you in the house? Yes, yes, I am, David. Thank you. You could take it up. All right, great. Uh, before going back to David, let me give you a brief bio of how our Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council become to be. Uh, so the council is a youth-led body initiated by young people from the continent of Africa uh, under the guidance and stewardship of, as you can see, you lead Africa, the MSTCDC, and the JZ African Union Office. Um, as, has been, as it has been said, the council was an outcome of a one-week uh, continental bootcamp for young business leaders and policymakers on the CFTA. It was launched by our patron, His Excellency Jakaya Kikwete, former president of Tanzania, uh, during the ULID African Summit in 2021. Uh, I'll come back. Oh, thank you so much, Fabian. Uh, I think we've lost you. Uh, Franklin, uh, can you hear us? Sodfa? We can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. So uh, the vision of the council mainly uh, 
is to facilitate the institutionalization of youth participation in decision-making processes and the implementation processes of the African continent of free trade area. And our mission mainly as a council is to ensure that youth are mobilized all over the African continent to participate in the intra-African trade. But there's a big question, the big question that Ikoyaka is answering. What is it answering? You may realize that at the beginning of our leadership Ivan's presentation, he noted that there is no youth participation in the implementation processes of the AFCFTA and Ikoyaka chapters is mainly ensuring that youth are, are participating in the processes of the AFCFTA. The second one is, is implementation. So Ikoyaka helps to mobilize resources, to foster youth inclusion, uh, and also advocating for the alignment of national level plans to suit AFCFTA implementation in each African Union member state. The other, of course, is trade data availability. And you know that, that for us to be able to trade better, we need research. And this is where, of course, Ikoyaka comes in again. With, uh, of course, at the end of the day, the council will have over 55 members, and this will be a, a, a force good enough to collect data all over the continent. The other, of course, is coordination and mainstreaming, which also is one big challenge that we have in the African continent. So the, uh, the, the council chapters prevent misalignment of AFCFJ youth programs, hence enabling at scale youth participation in intra African trade, but also partner leveraging. We, right now, the AFCFJ, there, there are a lot of partners are participating in the implementation process. So they, the chapters are the only body in each member state with a strong foundation that can only help uh, align our partners overlapping framework to mainly suit the in the AFCFTA implementation processes. So those are the five key issues that the council is trying to solve. And the big one, what we call the moonshot that is going to ensure that our African youth from all over the continent understand and appreciate the AFCFTA is our online AFCFT Youth and a Women and Youth in Trade Academy. This online academy is going to ensure that there's continuous learning, continuous empowering, continuous capacity building of our youth. And when we talk about our youth, we are not forgetting the women who actually account for the 80% of, of the informal cross-border trade. So this online platform that the Ikoyaka is putting up is going to mainly ensure that we safeguard, we, we empower our youth, we give them the knowledge Specifically, also market entry procedures, which has actually proven to be a big challenge for our youth. Yes, the AFCFJ is here, but how can I get into Chad? How can I get into Libya? This is what we shall be answering with this amazing treaty. Yes, Faber. Yes. So, everyone, we have 43 country chapters right now as of today. And please go on and um, reach out to uh, the countries that you see in the list. I hope you can see every country uh, in the list. This is the first one we have. We have it in different countries, in 43 countries in Africa. So please go ahead and reach out to uh, the country chapters uh, heads, or you can reach out to us. All our social media platforms are in the chat box. Please go ahead and reach out to us and uh, we'll link you to the country chapter, to the country chapters. So colleagues, thank you so much for listening to us. We are actually looking forward to reaching out to you. If we have not yet reached your country, we are reaching there very soon. And uh, to tell you what, the AFCFJ is ours because it's the only agreement that is going to put money directly in the pockets of our youth. So for development partners who are here, we actually call upon you to support the council idea. This amazing council is going to ensure that every youth in every part of the country with our bottom-up approach is going to be engaged and informed about the AFCFJ. So Asanteni, Sanan, thank you for listening to us. Thank you very much for introducing us to the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on AFCFTA. And I'm sure that our participants will be following the work of the council, but also I'm pretty sure they have some questions for you. So please uh, do not leave us. And I would like to open the floor for two questions. I have also received the suggestions in the chat. Please feel free to send me the questions as well in direct message, all comments and ways for us to improve and to learn for our next activities. So thank you so much to the participants who are also suggesting. Please raise your hands. Great. Um, I would like to start with the Desiree Balubi. You have 30 seconds for your question. Oh, thank you. Thank you for accepting my uh, request. Uh, this is not a question. As you can see, I'm not part of the youth. I don't consider myself, uh, you know, by, I mean, 
relating to age. I've, I was born in the 50s. I posted something in the chat, so I wouldn't make any, any speech. Um, the host of uh, a show on Temple Africa TV based here in the United States, and uh, our mission is to showcase initiatives like yours. It could be individual, it could be organizations. You're welcome to contact us, and then we will, if you're willing to share your ideas, what you're doing, uh, making reports, so on and so forth. Come to my show, you'll be interviewed free of charge and the rest of the whole world uh, will be listening to you live, okay? And that's what we do, so uh, every Friday, you can read it, I, have, I don't have to go through all of the, uh, you know, the post that you have in the chat room. So thank you, uh, Sotfa Deji, for a wonderful job that you're doing. I think uh, we, you are the future of our continent. We trust you to do the best that you can to make Africa proud of you. Our founding fathers are proud of you in their graves. And those of us who are still here, we're here to support you. Thank you so much. And I'm Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remark and for the dose of encouragement to, to the African youth. I would like now to give uh, the um, opportunity to ask the question, Moses Sonyango, 30 seconds. Moses Sonyango. Okay, next one. Um, Stefan Awapobi. So I see a lot of hands are up, but it might be that the participants are not here. Okay, Stefan, yes, 30 seconds. When you are discovered the unknown barriers, because the are not hearing you, Stefan. Okay, so it's not working. Um, okay, yes. Uh, let's go to another um, quick question. Joseph Owino. 30 yes, seconds. Hello, are you able to get to me? Yes, 30 seconds for your question to the Independent Council. Okay, my, my question is about uh, the issues of uh, youth disability because personally I'm working, uh, I'm a youth leader working on the issues of youth disabilities because I'm a youth disability myself. And you're asking about, about the inclusion in this process. What is their stake? Because, you know, the, we always say that disability is a cross-cutting issue. And uh, to this extent, no, we have no, no like a uh, disability inclusion report under the African Free Continental Free Area. So we tend to ask ourselves, what about the inclusion of youth disability in this uh, uh, youth inclusion report? What's the stake? Is there a relative of youth disability in the Ikoyaka team so that at least we get to ensure that the strategies formulated are well conversant with the needs of persons with disability? Thank you so much. Thank you, Joseph, for your question, which is very relevant. Emolot Feben, who's going to answer 30 seconds. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, colleague, for uh, that important question. Yes, uh, the council is a universal council. We don't discriminate. And just to let you know, we also work with youth with disability. And, uh, I, 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 and our, team, our team also consists of youth with disability. So we are not leaving you out. Because again, I grew up from the border. And I know that those, uh, our youth and our fathers with disability actually contribute a lot to cross-border trade. So from that background, I actually consider them highly. And just to tell you, we have them and uh, we consider you highly. Thank you so much. Kindly, kindly, my re one kind request. Uh, sorry, we are really running out of time. Please use the chat box. We really need to go into the second part. Um, as Ivan has mentioned, this is just the start of the conversation. I hope everyone has also noted our emails because I've been seeing some comments. So uh, I kindly request our team at the comms to share all our emails. The same independent council, feel free to reshare your contacts so we can keep the conversation going. 
Um, and thank you so much uh, for your questions and for the engaging spaces we are uh, creating. And I would like now to invite Moses Kanyesige, Regional Program Associate Youth in Business, Trade and Enterprise at ULID Africa, who will be telling us about the Africa Under 40 uh, CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network. Moses, you have four minutes. Welcome. Uh, thank you so far. Thank, thank you, colleagues, participants who, are, who have just come here to share with us your views. My name is Moses. I welcome you, the Entrepreneurs, the CEOs Network, for coming and for coming in numbers. I can see you. Um, uh, uh, an Africa under 40 CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network is a network that is under our second pillar, uh, which is youth in business of the ULID. And um, uh, it was conceived in November 2019 in Arusha, Tanzania. Previously, ULID had one pillar, which was youth in politics, and this is now uh, youth in business. And uh, it has all entrepreneurs and CEOs from Africa, Previously, it was East Africa. Now it has moved to Africa. We started with 20 members. Now we've grown to 200, 200 300 members. The forum gathers young and young, gathers young and enterprising leaders in business, policy makers, and decision makers in government and environment and to find solution pressing issues uh, in the region's business environment. The cardinal aim to this forum's existence is tackling youth unemployment through nurturing enterprise and encouraging innovation. And um, the objective of the network is to provide a platform for young entrepreneurs and CEOs to network, share experience, and learn from each other's best case practice, to convene discussions with the relevant stakeholders and address challenges faced by young entrepreneurs and CEOs, notably as in relation to international and regional trade, and also to mobilize a broad constituency and leverage resources for joint advocacy on matters relating to youth in business in the East African community and beyond. Lastly, we've got, it has achieved, has some achievements that the network have achieved, which is, um, it has the, the youth in business and the network has established uh, a desk at East African Business Council where the youth uh, entrepreneurs and, um, and SMEs, women in cross-border trade can address their challenges. And we are happy that uh, we are collaborating with East African Business Council for providing a youth desk there. We've been having a series of webinars uh, discussing on how the infrastructures put by government and government partners on how they can benefit youth entrepreneurs, especially the protocols on common market, customs union, and other infrastructures like one-stop border posts, single customs territory that mentioned, but a few also discussed challenges brought by COVID-19, especially small and medium enterprises, we have established leadership of the network and the framework of engagement where we have country coordinators and regional coordinators. Also discussions on CFTA and how these young entrepreneurs can network and grab these opportunities presented by AFTA. Lastly, I would love to thank the EABC where it, has, it is building a portal uh, where these young entrepreneurs can access information 
And um, it's good that this portal is being built when we have established a youth desk at East African Business Council. With those few remarks, I thank you for giving, him, for giving me a chance so far. Thank you very much, Moses. And we are really excited to see what's on the plate of the network. I would like uh, on the same to get to two questions, 30 seconds. I've been seeing hands since the start, so I'm not sure who's actually online or not. Um, I will start with um, Tanatsiwa Dambuza. Are you online? Yes, hi, you have 30 seconds, a question to Moses. Oh, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I wanted to ask uh, a melody, uh, a question, but I think uh, it still uh, remains uh, relevant uh, because I wanted to inquire whether there are opportunities uh, or any platform where uh, Ikoyaka um, or the the AFCFTA underfoot uh, initiative um, can, can uh, publish uh, the, 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 the articles uh, that we write uh, as youth that are related to the AFCFTA or that are related to the youth in, in the AFCFTA, youth in business, uh, youth in small and medium uh, enterprises, etc. So that is what I wanted to inquire and what are the procedures that uh, can be taken so that uh, we can use uh, maybe writing as a way of uh, disseminating information to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Moses. 30 seconds. Yes, yeah, thank you for your question. And let me answer the question, although it has been, uh, it was meant for Emerald. Yes, there are platforms. Um, the Africa Under 40 and CEOs uh, network with the Ekoyaka, we always have activities that we call Youth Engage Series. And those Youth Engage Series, we talk uh, around many sectors, we discuss about many topics. And uh, if you are interested in writing, yes, you can reach to us and uh, we will come the research, the, those who wants to do research, those who wants to write, so that we can see the topic you are writing and if it is related to youth in business, if it is related to trade, if it's related to continental free trade area, anything that is related to international and regional trade, we will come with and we will support it and we can uh, do it together. And also we can make sure that that writing reaches the safe hands of government, development partners, to mention about a few. Thank you, Moses, for your response. I'm seeing the list is increasing, but I would like to, the last question, 30 seconds. I see Yuneka Mi Vedel Jorgensen. I hope I'm pronouncing well the name. Are you there? Great, 30 seconds for your question, thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, big congratulations to, uh, to everyone on uh, both the CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network and also with the IACUA or Ikuyaka, um, it's really great to see the establishment. I wanted to ask a quick question on uh, if you are planning to uh, implement the CEOs Entrepreneurs Network in other regions in Africa as well, if you have any plans yet, or if, it's, uh, if you are taking this as a, um, as a first, first try and then see if you can implement it to the other regions. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, it's we are trying to we are expanding it to other regions. That's why we call it Africa Under Forty Seals and Entrepreneurs Network. When it started previously in 2019, it started as an East Africa initiative. But because of activities and projects that we do across Africa, like CFTA, we have <clears throat> it has expanded to other regions of Africa. And we have also leadership, the regional coordinators in each region, West Africa, Central Africa, North and the Horn Africa. So it has expanded to other parts of Africa.
Thank you so much, Moses. And thank you everyone for your questions. Please keep engaging into the chat. Be assured that my team members, everyone is reading your comments and taking notes of your questions. And if we manage to wrap up a bit earlier the program, I promise I will keep um, opening the opportunities for questions and comments. Um, and thank you, Moses and everyone. Uh, we have heard from Ivan, Emolot, Feben and Moses, and we are a step closer to the official launch of the study, the network and the independent council, and this wouldn't be possible without the participation of distinguished guests and experts. And our work on the AFCFTA Youth Inclusion Accelerator project wouldn't have been possible without the support and contribution of GIZAU, the German Development Agency. And we were expecting today to hear the remarks of His Excellency Ambassador Stefan Auer, the German ambassador to Ethiopia and the African Union. But unfortunately, the ambassador had an emergency. We would like, however, to extend our appreciation and consideration to join this event. And so without further ado, we go into um, hearing uh, on behalf of the Secretary General of the East African Community, one of the champions and supporters of African youth, Mr. David Onen. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Sotva. Uh, before I the formal submission and remarks of the Secretary General, allow me to make a one or two comments. Uh, the Secretary General wanted to be online himself and participate actively with the, the young people and the, the stakeholders of this forum. Uh, unfortunately, he could not avoid also being present in Nairobi, where they're laying off the, 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 the third president of Kenya, and he had to be there. Uh, president Mwai Kibaki was one of the big champions of youth and, and engagement in Kenya. Uh, some of the Kenyans who are online will realize how we contributed to uh, policy and uh, legal structures that enable the youth to empower and engage in business. One of which was the, the procurement quota for youth, for young people in Kenya, which is a policy which uh, led Mwai Kibaki as president brought in Kenya. And that's how young people, businesses can also access government procurement and, and, and work with the government as business people. Uh, I would like to request uh, from you so that you can have a moment of silence as we celebrate him and his life and also being led today to his final resting place. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Now then, uh, allow me to read verbatim the remarks of the Secretary General of the East African Community at this uh, All African Virtual Launch of the Continental Scoping Study Report on the ACFTA Youth Inclusion, Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on the AFCFTA uh, and the Africa and the 40 CEOs and entrepreneurs network. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished uh, guests and young people, today we are once again gathered to discuss and share on very important and significant subject of youth inclusion in our development agenda. We are talking about the involvement of young people in the development processes as key in ensuring effective implementation and sustainability of development initiatives in Africa. In this case, the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. The African Continental Free Trade Agreement promises employment, entrepreneurship, opportunities for youth. But how do our can policymakers and development organizations take steps to ensure the agreement reaches its full potential for the youth? This is a question we need to answer if the agreement is to make meaning. To the, to the continent and to the youth of Africa. For the East African community as a regional economic community, we are taking small but significant steps in ensuring that our young people are not left behind in all the processes of dialogue, negotiations and policy on the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. We recognize our role as coordination and implementation hub of, the, of this agreement 
are to ensure sustainable youth engagement while also ensuring governmental ownership for the project and its processes and outputs. It's against this background that through our partnership with the MS Training Center for Development Cooperation, using our established framework and structures, we have engaged the ULIT Secretariat working with the East African Youth Ambassadors Platform to implement this scoping uh, study project. The report of which we are launching today, we wish to thank the technical and financial support of GIZ African Union uh, Office that has made it, this project possible. The study has brought to the fore significant challenges and gaps in the youth inclusion in this continental trade agreement. We cannot ignore this finding, we cannot ignore this finding if the agreement must work for the youth. The team that undertook this study has shared more details on the findings and, and identified the gaps. As the Secretary General of the East Africa Community, I have had the advantage to preface this report. And my take home from, the, uh, from this report in terms of gaps are the following. One is a structural in exclusion the agreement does not provide for the participation of youth in these instruments and the framework and structures as part of the exclusion identified in the study. Exclusion from the Apex business organizations. Uh, as you may be aware, the manner in which the Apex business bodies are instituted has significantly excluded the youth from participating in those Apex and uh, hierarchical spaces. Knowledge exclusion. While this agreement promises many benefits for the youth, it is impossible to monitor and measure participation and benefits to the youth. Therefore, we will never know the extent to which the youth have participated or benefited from this continental trade agreement. Uh, this uh, more uh, in the report, and for those who have accessed the report, you will have read, and those who will, will read later will understand more about these gaps. As a REC, the East African community will continue to engage and support advocacy and policy processes to ensure the youth exclusion from the, the trade agreement is eliminated. This report gives us a baseline for action by all stakeholders. The African youth through this project have started to engage with the negotiation and dialogue processes of the agreement. Some of the key mechanisms for the engagement of the youth is proposed to be, and Ivan and uh, Moses have already talked about some of these uh, initiatives already, one of which being youth measurement index that ensures there is reporting on the youth participation and uh, uh, benefit from this uh, trade agreement. Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council, which, we have been, which has been uh, presented to you as part of the engagement process of young people with the, uh, with the trade agreement. And then, of course, the, the Youth Inclusion Accelerator Project, which is also one of the results of, uh, from which this report has come as a project. The African Under 40 CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network, which we are also launching today, is part of the, the initiative that will help the, the young people uh, to find space and engage with the, this continental trade agreement. The quest for a meaningful youth participation and benefit from the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is summed up in this statement. And this statement was uh, coined uh, as part of the the, the the concept for this launch. Why African youth should care about the EF, AFCFTA and what African governments, development partners, private sector, academia, civil society, and other actors can do to enable meaningful participation and maximum benefits of the trade agreement to the African youth. So this summarizes uh, the quest and the stakeholders and what roles we need to play. In ensuring we achieve the desired participation of the youth and the benefit to the youth, there is a double entry mechanism which we envisage. One, youth on one side must organize, must network, and must engage themselves. 
This will uh, ensure the youth engage meaningfully with the policy processes to get organized. And uh, these other mechanisms we have talked about before are part of the way youth can organize and mobilize and engage. First, among themselves as, uh, as a constituency. And then the second part is, of course, the side of the policymakers. And the policymakers must engage and dialogue to ensure the youth inclusion exclusion is eliminated. So these are the two prong uh, uh, approach which can enable uh, meaningful and uh, uh, inclusion and participation of young people. The youth on one side get organized and then the policymakers on the other side. And then the convergence of the two above will provide a safe and democratic space for youth to engage and, meanf and, meanf and the meaningful outcomes of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. The development partners who wish to support these processes need to identify their entry points in these two and above two mechanisms. Support the side of the youth, cannot support the side of policymakers, and can support the convergence of the two. I strongly believe the Continental Trade Agreement can work for the youth, and we are here to make it work. Let us join hands and drive this uh, youth agenda for a sustainable uh, development in Africa. With these few remarks, I once again thank the organizers of this launch and the distinguished guests who have joined in, in this program. This is the message of the Secretary General of the East African Community. Back to you, uh, Sotfa. Thank you very much, Mr. Onan, for the submission, and we appreciate your support to the young people, as well as the support of Honorable Dr. Peter Mathuki, the East African Community Secretary General, who is a fervent believer of African youth, and I recall that during ULID Summit 2021, Honorable Mathuki said to the youth delegates, you can make Africa the factory of the world, so thank you once again. And we are honored today to have the AFCFTA Secretariat joining us to launch the official report. Uh, the Secretariat and His Excellency Wam Kelemene, the AFCFTA Secretary General, expressed a keen interest in young people's views and opinions as great stakeholders for the implementation of this agreement. In this regard, we are honored to have Mr. Prudence Sebahizi, Chief Technical Advisor at the AFCFTA Secretariat, representing His Excellency Wam Kelemene, AFCFTA Secretary General, providing keynote remarks and marking the official launch of the report. Mr. Prudence, welcome and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, um, Sodfa. I hope you can hear me well. Yes, we can. Very good. Um, I've, I've been enjoying this session since, um, uh, since the beginning. And I was waiting for this um, occasion to, uh, to have um, the keynote speech uh, by His Excellency Wamkele Mene, uh, who requested me to represent him at this very uh, important event. Um, he supports very, very much uh, the initiative of um, young people on the continent, uh, given the fact that uh, the FCFTA uh, has hope, um, a lot of hope. Uh, in the young people. Um, of course, all protocols observed. I know um, we had uh, Ms. McKenna, who is Executive Director, uh, MS Training Center for Development Corporation. Uh, we have the representative of uh, EAC Secretary General. Um, I did not see the representative of GIZ, but if present, uh, you are recognized. Um, we also have uh, the representative of uh, representatives of different uh, collaborating partners. Uh, we have uh, the representative, the executive director of East African Business Council. I think I've seen uh, my friend John Bosco uh, Kalisa, and uh, all distinguished um, um, uh, personalities here present. I would like to recognize you and to greet you all. Good afternoon. Of course, um, it is a great honor and privilege for me to uh, deliver this keynote speech uh, on behalf um, of His Excellency Wam Kele Mene at this important virtual gathering, making the official launch and presentation of the outcomes of the Continental Scoping Study and the unveiling of the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on AFCFTA. 
I would like to start by thanking MS uh, Training Center for Development Cooperation and the East African Community Secretariat for the kind invitation. I would like to also commend you lead um, and partners for the strong collaboration, which has culminated in the publication of the study report that we are talking about today. The publication of this uh, study report is timely and uh, important to the successful implementation of the FCFTA. And of course, by extension, the AU Agenda 2063, uh, the Africa we want. As it helps to advance the structural inclusion of youth in the FCFTA process, as it is uh, well known, uh, the youth uh, represent the future of a society and its economy. Uh, this is especially so in Africa where um, almost 60% uh, of the population is under the age of uh, 25. Um, and the continent also has uh, 19 of the world's uh, 20 youngest countries. The socioeconomic integration of the youth in Africa is therefore crucial for the future of the, of the continent. However, Africa's youth uh, face major challenges uh, that greatly affect their current uh, and future livelihoods. Um, we have an opportunity uh, to change the narrative and harness the potential of the youth, uh, of the youthful po population uh, to achieve uh, Africa's sustainable development. It is time to implement policy and institutional actions that will remove uh, the encumbrances and unlock opportunities for Africa's youth. It is in this context that um, the FCFTA, which was established in March uh, 2018 and operationalized in January 2021, 20, uh, 20, um, is pertinent. As I speak, 43 African Union member states have ratified uh, and deposited their instrument of ratification, uh, making them uh, state parties uh, with full rights and obligations under the FCFTA agreement. We expect to see um, additional ratification in the course of the year. It is our wish um, that all African Union member states become state parties to the FCFTA Secretariat in order to have uh, the FCFTA operating at full capacity to yield uh, maximum benefits. And um, I have said, um, of course, uh, on a number of occasions, whenever I have chance uh, that the FCFTA is not uh, one for the, the FCFTA is not one for the youth uh, to explore and find uh, some benefits in, the point is that um, the youth are the foundation upon which the FCFTA must find its relevance and success. Therefore, the youth must claim ownership of the FCFTA and seek to shape and maximize um, it for their businesses and their careers. And I'm happy to note that uh, many young African um, entrepreneurs and SMEs across Africa are already taking steps to uh, position themselves uh, to benefit from the free trade area and scale up uh, their businesses. Um, you could have seen this um, uh, more emphasized by the recent report uh, that was commissioned by UNDP and the FCFTA Secretariat. Uh, the report um, uh, on the futures, uh, actually it is called the futures report uh, making the FCFTA work for women and youth. So uh, this is um, a very important um, indication that youth, um, uh, young entrepreneurs are the main uh, beneficiaries of the FCFTA. As FCFTA Secretariat, our priority is the implementation of the agreement. Um, of course, um, in this implementation, um, we should make sure that um, uh, there should be shared benefits. Um, and as such, we are looking at the concrete ways in which uh, the benefits can be expanded for young people and for women in trade. 
Uh, we don't have all the answers. We want to hear from young Africans. Uh, today, if you go to, um, to Kigali, for example, um, you will find um, young Africans, um, you will find young African software engineers um, at the forefront of, uh, of, of innovation. And these are the people that we want to bring into the fold of the agreement. Our role as the FCFTA Secretariat is to establish uh, the conducive environment for young Africans to leverage their ideas. Um, and this is especially um, important. We don't have um, all the answers to uh, innovation, but we can create and establish uh, regulatory frameworks within the context um, of, the, of the FCFTA. I'm also happy to say that um, as tasked by the AU um, Authority of um, Heads of State and the Government, uh, the FCFTA Secretariat is developing a protocol on women and youth in trade uh, to place women and youth at the center of the AFCFTA and ensure that women and youth have access uh, and, uh, and, and derive the intended benefits from uh, the continental free trade area. Uh, of course, we are taking steps uh, to involve all the stakeholders from um, initiation stage uh, to ensure uh, effective implementation of the protocol. And in this regard, uh, we are in partnership with the UNDP uh, UN Women, and of course, uh, very soon we start engaging the youth uh, to facilitate uh, the round tables consultations for the FCFTA protocol on women and youth uh, to interrogate the critical issues uh, that this segment of the people um, uh, meet uh, when they cross border and when they do uh, business within the FCFTA. And this uh, process of collecting views uh, from uh, traders is very critical to ensure um, that the beneficiaries um, define uh, what uh, the protocol should entail. And we intend, of course, to intensify this kind of consultations throughout the continent. It is very important, therefore, um, for the youth and the youth associations as you lead uh, to increase their participation in the national strategies and FCFTA negotiation processes uh, to promote uh, youth inclusive measures and um, effective implementation of the agreement. Of course, you will need um, a united collective voice uh, to ensure a strong representation of the interest of the youth uh, during critical discussion on the uh, continental issues. Um, that's why we, um, we tend to encourage actually young people to come together uh, to form networks, to form um, umbrella organization that will uh, raise their voice um, uh, in this um, uh, continental uh, engagement process. So let me now turn to uh, the study report uh, for which we are gathered here today. Uh, the report that uh, is titled Making the FCFTA Promises a Reality for African youth, a continental study on the capacity gaps, policy constraints, and the prospects uh, of the youth inclusion in the FCFTA. Uh, since a summary of the key findings from the report has already been presented to you, um, I would limit myself to a very few uh, points. Uh, first, uh, the findings are grounded in evidence and informed by broad consultation with the practitioners, policymakers, uh, academics, uh, and experts from across the continent. As noted, the study benefited from the participation and uh, captured views of more than uh, 10,000 young African um, trade policy experts, staff of the FCFTA Secretariat have also participated, uh, regional economic communities, among others, and the scale and level of collaboration across the continent is indeed um, highly uh, commendable. Um, secondly, um, in shining light on the role African youth uh, have and should play in the implementation of the FCFTA and the support um, and, and the support relevant stakeholders should extend to uh, enable their meaningful participation 
in the FCFT. Um, this report uh, makes an important contribution to the implementation process uh, of the FCFT. Thirdly, um, the study's recommendations are insightful and should be positively uh, considered by all stakeholders at national level, at regional level, and, uh, and continental level. Um, we have now the, the gift um, of new empirical, um, uh, empirical based study report uh, on the youth and the FCFT. We should read it, uh, we should um, respond to it and allow it to influence policy. Um, and this brings me, of course, to uh, the next issue on the agenda, which is the unveiling of the uh, Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on FCFT. I'm advised that um, the council was officially launched uh, on the 9th November 2021 by His Excellency um, Jakaya Kikwete, uh, who is the ULEAD patron and the former president of the United Republic of Tanzania as well as uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Peter Mathuki, uh, who is the ESC Secretary General. Uh, the Council is, um, of course, a non-Africa youth-led coordination structure, as I encouraged you before. It is now active with the country-level national AFCFTA youth champions, as we have seen, um, in over uh, 20 AU member states, uh, which is very um, encouraging to me. Uh, and those um, states are also state parties uh, to uh, the AFCFT agreement. So let me uh, use this opportunity to congratulate um, each and every one of you um, on the selection of the members of this uh, council. Uh, I'm sure your expertise can provide valuable insights, which will further push uh, the frontiers of the implementation of the AFCFT. As I come to uh, the close of my, my remarks, um, it is worth of note uh, that the FCFT uh, has what it takes to tackle the challenges faced by the youth uh, by creating more jobs and entrepreneurship opportunities for young men and women in the key uh, sectors, including manufacturing, agriculture, and services. The youth can also take advantage of FCFT protocol on digital trade. You know, there is a, a protocol on digital trade being uh, developed. And this protocol um, underscores the importance um, of the digital economy of the continent. Um, today, we have um, an opportunity to change the narrative and to harness the potential of the youthful population to achieve Africa's sustainable development. It is time uh, to make efforts to assist the youth uh, to participate in the regional value chains and of course um, in, in, in cross-border trade. And the implementation of the FCFTA should um, and would be guided by the desire for uh, inclusiveness, especially of youth and women. Um, indeed, your voices are critical in shaping and strengthening inclusive continental policies. Um, and on this note, uh, once again, I would like to uh, convey uh, our congratulations to ULEAD and partners on the launch of the Continental Scoping Study on Youth Inclusion, the FCFTA process. Um, as FCFTA Secretariat, we trust that this analytical work uh, will guide and enrich our continental integration, as well as uh, economic uh, transformation efforts. We look forward to uh, your future publications, which will chart, of course, the story of Africa's economic transformation and integration under the FCFTA. It is now um, my pleasure, um, on behalf of uh, His Excellency Wamkele Mene, the Secretary General of the FCFTA Secretariat, to launch the report on the Continental Scoping Study. Uh, which is entitled Making the FCFTA Promises a Reality for African Youth, a Continental Study on the Capacity Gaps, Policy Constraint and Prospects for Youth Inclusion in the FCFTA. Of course, I have the honor to also declare the uh, Advisory Council, the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on FCFTA officially launched. I wish you um, a fruitful, uh, deliberation and thank you very much for uh, this opportunity.
Thank, Thank you. you very much, Mr. Prudence. I can see the control room in Arusha clapping. This is indeed an exciting and important moment. And thank you so much um, to the AFCFTA Secretariat, to His Excellency Wam Kelemene for really believing and positioning young people in the front line. This is definitely not taken for granted. And this can be seen also from the fire of our participants. I see participants keep adding, and we really appreciate it. You can all see on the screen the cover of our study. I kindly request our team to share the link for everyone to please go and read our findings. And I'm myself very, very excited about this moment. Um, I would like, first of all, to thank uh, all of you for the patience. I know we are a bit late, but this is okay. Um, it's, uh, you know, one of these spaces which are youth owned and youth led. Mr. Prudence, I know that we have already taken a lot of your time but if you can allow for two questions two exactly I think that will be a great moment please let me know if your schedule allows yeah that's fine uh if we can go straight ahead oh, wonderful the, so the we, first uh, question will be actually coming from our director Ivana Tuyambe in the meantime as Ivan asks the question young people and participants please raise your hand and I will randomly pick the second question uh, thank you, Sudfa. And uh, the fact that you give me the first question, if my brother, Mr. Seva, is, doesn't mind, we could give more to the young people to discuss and interact with him a bit, but it's up to you. You are controlling the program. Mr. Seva is, and um, His Excellency, uh, the Secretary General of Safety, thank you very much for your support so far. I have just um, one question that uh, one, we are into the phase two of negotiations. And as the study has shown, youth are extremely interested in this agreement and they are the biggest part of the African population. But um, I am worried and many of us are worried about the combination of the women and youth into one protocol. Uh, we think that it would be more beneficial and um, targeted if there was a protocol on women and a protocol on youth in the FCFTA. So what is the thinking behind the combination? Are youth and women the same? Their needs, uh, are they the same? Even within the youth, there are like some groups, some intersectionality between them. So putting the women and youth, I don't know why, and we would like to know if there is a possibility to split and have a targeted protocol for youth and a targeted protocol for women. I thank you. Thank you, uh, Ivan. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to go one by one or do we get all of them? Um, I think we can go one by one. Yes, I think, um, of course, the question that is raised by, um, uh, uh, by Ivan is very, uh, very, very key. Um, you have to understand, uh, first of all, uh, where we came from. Uh, it's not common to have um a protocol on youth it is not uh, common or usual to have a protocol on women in any trade agreement so this is going to be the first time uh, in the history uh, of trade um, we've never had any not even a chapter in any trade agreement addressing specific issues related to women and youth so the reason behind combining women and youth under the same protocol, of course, which we can uh, celebrate as a big achievement to uh, secure mandate to have a protocol on women and youth um, in trade. The reason behind combining those key stakeholders in one protocol is that we are not looking at the, uh, we are not looking at the aspect um, of women as such or aspect of youth as such. We are looking at business side of those two stakeholders. One side is where um, we encourage young entrepreneurs to contribute to the development of the continent. And this can be done through uh, this protocol that we address specific issues that young entrepreneurs face. It will also be addressed through um, the protocol on digital trade because it will be cross-cutting. Then, uh, we are trying to resolve issues of uh, cross-border trade. 
especially those who are involved in informal cross-border trade. So the protocol will address some of the challenges that informal cross-border traders uh, meet uh, because we understand the big corporation have already got different avenues where they can um, advocate for um, their own problems. They can resolve their own problems and most of them have got even uh, stronger structures than governments. Then thirdly, uh, we want to address uh, issues of uh, small, micro and medium enterprises. And mainly those uh, small, micro and medium enterprises that are owned by young people and those that are, are owned by, uh, by women. So the issues that will be common among women and youth are issues related to informal cross-border trade, entrepreneurship, and small and medium enterprises. It's not about youth issues as, uh, per se or women issues per se. It's just issues that are common because they lead I to you. trade. I, I think it's, it's, it's clear on that one. Thank you, Mr. Prudence, for your response. I see the hand up from Mr. Kalisa. Uh, Mr. Kalisa, is there a question to Mr. Prudence? Yeah, yeah, thank okay. you. I want to just yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, Daji. Uh, yeah, just uh, to appreciate and uh, and commend uh, the efforts uh, by uh, the CFTA Secretariat uh, for coming up with this protocol. I, for me, I don't have an issue to treat youth and women at the same level. As uh, Pro uh, Prudence highlighted, yeah, uh, the, when you look at the CFTA, it's very unique in the sense that uh, the needs, interest, and the voice of the youth are uh, being taken uh, are being taken into consideration. That is a plus. That is a plus. That's why I commend and really appreciate uh, the efforts by the secretariat. Uh, and uh, my my appeal is to fast track that protocol to enable the youth uh, from the ranks from the ranks so that they are able to to reap the benefits provided by the continental free trade area. Having said that, uh, I, me I have no issue. I you know, I recommend that. Uh, the two protocol because the protocol is a framework uh, that enables youth women to trade under that big uh, agreement. That's okay. My big question, uh, Prudence, which I wanted to put across to you, and I know the CFTA Secretariat has been every engaging the, the, the financing organization. So the biggest challenge we have, uh, especially for the youth, is access to the, to the development finance or trade finance. Are you thinking about coming up with a venture fund different from uh, the normal funding we know that, uh, that require corrector security and has a, a stringent requirement for the youth to ensure that the youth are able to start their business, grow their business, and ensure their business can move across borders? That is the, the daunting challenge we have, and I wanted to have uh, I had, uh, uh, had spoken to Ivan that we need to pay courtesy call to your office and uh, Secretary General to ensure that you engage Afro-Exim Bank. I've realized they have a number of products, but they don't have a, a clear product for the youth. And that is the way to go. The youth need to have access to finance. The youth need to have technical support in terms of capacity. The youth need to have market access information. Uh, uh, next week, I'll be launching African Trade Observatory but it's very silent about the women and the youth. And that is the, the, the key, the key drive of this agreement. Until we include the youth and the women to be at the center stage of driving this uh, CFTA, otherwise the agreement will remain as just a, a theoretical agreement, but will not attach the real realities that impact the women and the, uh, and, and the youth who constitute almost 70% of our, our trading community. So that is my, my point, Dad, uh, um, and I want to really commend the efforts by the Secretariat, by the CFTA Secretariat in terms of uh, thinking about this independent protocol on youth and women. But uh, again, I want to know the deadline when the protocol will be finalized from Prudence, and we want to provide our inputs. Uh, lastly, let me say that uh, at the EAC level, where EABC provided inputs, we did take into consideration our regional CFTA strategy, we took into consideration the youth and the women, including this, the people living with disabilities. When you look at our strategy, 
it is already weaved in and the, 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 the monitoring framework is already uh, catered for. So I want also to call other eggs to ensure that uh, when you are developing the strategy in, in terms of implementing the CFTA, please, please weave in, please integrate the issues, the needs and aspiration of the youth. Thank you very much, I appreciate. Uh, moderator, you want me to go ahead? Yes, please. Okay, very good. Uh, thank you very much, uh, JB, uh, for clear intervention and, uh, and specific questions. Uh, let me start with, um, with the deadline, which is the easiest. Um, this protocol has been approved uh, as part of the scope of the FCFTA agreement in February uh, this year. It's just uh, uh, like uh, two or three months ago. Um, we have already started the process, uh, and the process we always start with the consultations um, of stakeholders. So uh, between now and end of the year, uh, we have um, a number of sessions that will focus on the key stakeholders that um, have interest in this protocol. But we also have um, consultations with experts who will uh, advise on how to translate um, stakeholders' recommendations into uh, legally binding provisions. And then we hope that as soon as we complete that process, a protocol can be uh, drafted and uh, negotiated by, uh, by the member states. Um, with regard to um, access to finance, actually, um, uh, access to finance is one of the priority um, that FCFTA Secretariat has now put on the agenda. We are working with um, African financial institutions. Uh, that's number one. African financial institutions such as Afrexim Bank, African Development Bank, to make sure, because those are developmental um, institutions, to make sure that they work with uh, commercial banks. In fact, we are also engaging commercial banks. But we want those um, big uh, developmental institutions to work with the commercial banks to set up um, risk uh, mitigation guarantees or funds that will be uh, hosted by those um, uh, financial institutions. And those financial, um, uh, those risk mitigation guarantee funds can ensure that those who do not have a collateral, who cannot have access to, uh, to, to, to loan from commercial banks can be using those, um, those funds. It's not about giving them money. It's just about certifying that when they default, then the guarantee fund can cover them. That's number one intervention that we are looking forward and we think uh, in the near future it will, it will be implemented. The second action, which is very important, for SMEs, uh, for entrepreneurs to access those uh, funds available, they also need their own capacities to be built. Um, we are working with our partners. Um, I have just spent a full week with the, with the representative of ITC International Trade Center. Uh, one of the uh, key uh, areas that I told them to intervene is to make sure, for example, at the end of the year, can they put on record let's say 5,000 SMEs that have been lifted from um, one, uh, uh, one step to the other that have been um, facilitated to access one of the credit line that is um, availed by the financial institutions. They build their capacities, but they will also take them through uh, the due diligence process that will allow them to access funds, that will allow them to uh, have uh, trust by those financial institutions to give them money that they need for entrepreneurship, that they need for business. So we are looking at both the financial side of uh, assisting them to access funding, but also the capacity side of um, building their technical capacity and uh, allow them to have access to those funding. This is what we are doing. And the third one is... Uh, uh, we are also working with uh, uh, multinational uh, 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 partners such as European Union. Uh, you will know that uh, maybe you are aware um, we already have a big program for Sub-Saharan Africa 
uh, that will cover all regional economic communities um, where European Union has already pledged close to uh, 650 uh, million euro that will be deployed um, uh, over the next, uh, I think, four years up to uh, 2027. And that money is going uh, to focus on building the institutions at regional level, at continental level, but also supporting um, small and medium enterprises to reap the benefits of the FCFTA. So we are mobilizing a lot of money and we want to focus that funding to building the capacities of players in the FCFTA, not the capacities of um, continental institutions, but rather ensuring that Africans take advantage of the FCFTA opportunities. Thank you very much, Mr. Prudence. And we have taken a bit of your time. So we are really glad uh, for you joining us. And once again, we send our appreciation to the entire AFCFTA Secretariat. And thank you everyone who was part of the launch of the Continental Study. Before heading to the second part, we are launching a poll and I kindly request all of you to take a few seconds to respond as this is an important step towards the ULIT Summit 2022. And as you respond to the poll, conscious of time, let's head towards the launch of the Africa Under 40 CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network. And um, we will be hearing, um, and we will be starting with keynote remarks from Ms. Smita Sangrajka, I hope I pronounced it well, Partner, International Development Advisory Services at KPMG East Africa. Ms. Smita, welcome and thank you very much for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much and uh, pleasure to, to be invited to speak at this important forum. Um, I think I was particularly asked to speak about how a firm like ours can engage in um, uh, supporting youth and cross-border trade. And I think one of the good things um, around us and KPMG is that we have a very strong African footprint. We, we work across Africa. We have 29 uh, offices servicing 54 uh, countries in Africa. And therefore, it's very easy for us to engage with governments and continental bodies across, across Africa. And one of the, the key areas that we can actually engage is obviously in policy discussions and seeing how youth um, uh, policies can improve youth uh, engagement, for example, providing youth uh, concessions, having youth-friendly policies as well, um, embedded within key, key cross-border trade um, policies. Another way is having engaging in multi-stakeholder partnerships as well. And for example, globally, we already, as part of our KPMG Impact Plan, engage uh, in, in many different initiatives um, to support our ESG goals. And uh, some of these include being part of the Global Education Coalition with UNESCO, supporting Inactus, and uh, the Junior Achievement. And uh, doing this is helping to upskill youth and helping to build capacity, mentorship, and coaching. And this is something we can actually leverage and uh, do more across the continent, and particularly design and implement programs that we've already done and we can help scale. Uh, across um, across Africa. So for example, one of the key things that I've noticed this theme has been coming up is capacity building. And this is something we've actually been doing um, already, for example, within Kenya and engaging with youth. Um, something we, we ran was a, a competition for innovation and youth ideas and actually did training uh, for, for the youth and um, provided funding as well which again speaks to the access to finance. And I think one of the important things around uh, providing capacity building for cross-border trade is really important because it would be a quagmire, I think, for, for youth to navigate through these complexities. And it's hard enough anyway uh, to do business planning and uh, manage business. And then trying to do it cross-border would obviously need more capacity building. So this is something we can support. And as I mentioned, we help thousands of uh, youth in Kenya, actually, um, as part of a program with the Micro Small Enterprise Authority to build this capacity and uh, help them in business planning as well. So um, other areas that we can help is market studies 
and uh, um, doing feasibility studies and I think particularly with the sector focus so it's great to see that there's a study already done but I think it would be good to focus on particular sectors as well uh, one of the main sectors in Africa we know is agriculture yet it's not necessarily um, attractive to youth but how can we engage youth with technology um, show that value addition and actually um, make it a profitable business across Africa as well. So again, these are areas that we could do feasibility studies, market studies, um, and have it very uh, sector specific to make it attractive to youth as well and see what uh, the gaps are because each sector would have its own nuances. And um, some of the things we've actually been doing is uh, we've been doing um, a, uh, a youth entrepreneurship um, investment bank uh, program project at the moment uh, across Africa as well to see how financing can be provided for youth. Uh, so I think that's a really, really good um, example of projects where you can actually have these kind of studies done. We're also doing things around urban economic development and um, investment attraction. And I think this is an area that we need to look at, particularly uh, for, uh, from an access to finance uh, perspective. And we're actually looking at value chain projects and infrastructure projects, which have key indicators around youth, women and job creation. So again, something like this can be scaled up uh, across Africa as well. Um, and finally, I think some of the other, uh, other areas that we can, um, we can look at as well is uh, looking at the digitization. As we know, um, that is the way forward. And uh, already there are certain initiatives uh, with continental bodies like the Africa Union has a digital um, uh, transformation strategy and getting involved in these kind of discussions would be important and actually helping provide platforms as well for youth. I think that would be great where youth can network, they can connect, it can create a marketplace as well for, for youth um, across uh, cross-border trade. And uh, digitization is uh, technology will help make, uh, make th these activities efficient as well. And toolkits can be provided. So uh, ignoring technology would be hard um, to help in, in this whole youth agenda as well. So I think in summary, I can stop there. Um, and ha happy to take any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Smita, for your valuable keynote remarks, for presenting KPMG's work, and for the support to the youth at national, regional, and beyond. And I'm conscious of your busy schedule, but I'm glad you have um, you are allowing us for a couple of questions. So maybe I'll take two. Um, I see already some hands up. Um, Peter Owini, you have 30 seconds, please, uh, for your question to Ms. Smita. Peter? Okay, there is no Peter. Peter maybe is not available. Uh, oh, okay, you are here. Please unmute your, great, 30 seconds. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, are you getting me? Yes, we can hear you. Please proceed. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, team. I think uh, I'm just great to be in this kind of platform. Uh, I don't know if my question will be relevant specifically to the last presenter, but uh, anyway, I had a comment on previously on uh, as youth. Uh, when uh, as, as the, the initiative taken in consideration that to currently uh, we see youth being uh, approached or in, introduced to uh, entrepreneurship kind of uh, thinking when they are at a mature stage. And sometimes it becomes like a pressure on them. Uh, do we consider uh, starting at early stage so that when a youth, we reach a youthful stage, I don't know the category of youth, if it is normal with our system where we talk of youth uh, of, as being one who has attained 18 years and above or 30 to 35, or youth as a young person. So if it is a cut, it cut across to everyone. But uh, I consider this is uh, our scenarios very different because uh, we realize that our youth uh, 
go to school and uh, do uh, after from high school or after college is when we start thinking entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship as a model to be uh, to help us grow how can we venture into starting early and make youth identify in their path and make sure that they identify entrepreneurship that are viable at early at early as a, at the early age so that when they progress and they get into deep deep into it they can actually prosper rather than starting this as early age as a, an, a, an alternative when they are almost failing is when they think that business is the only way to go while we know that this is exactly what they have, would have started early enough to make them also build in their capacity internalizing and adopt exactly what they should be doing at the early at that stage when they are starting so it's my plea that this team might it should continue Please wrap up what's the question concisely yeah okay mm -hmm. in summary yes how do we get youth starting earlier when it's not too late that they find this thing a difficult task to to to, establish, to accomplish as youth in entrepreneurship like field. Thank you, Peter. Miss Mita? Um, I think a good question and something actually we've been involved in when I mentioned some of the global initiatives and actually looking at how this can start early and we can have a holistic approach from both secondary, tertiary education and then um, helping youth enter the workforce as well. So these, there are certain initiatives that are out there that are already doing this. And I think it is very important. And we know that there's work that's happening at the moment, for example, with Tibet's as well. And we do need to close the skills gap and actually look at what skills are needed and what skills are actually being produced through our education systems as well. So I think a really good point. I know work is being done, but more needs to be done in this as well. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Mita. Last one from Edoru, 30 seconds, please. Um, okay, thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes. Okay, thank you. I am Edoru Stephen Martin, a member of the East African Community Youth Ambassadors Platform. And I will just target my question to um, uh, the issue of agriculture because Ms. Smita addressed the necessity for sectoral analysis. So um, focus on agriculture is going to require massive investment in order to uh, you know, have a massive restructuring of uh, agriculture, which in Africa is still largely nature dependent and that exposes it to a lot of risk. What is the commitment of uh, stakeholders and development partners to this type of risk um, sector? And what is the extent that you're willing to invest in it, especially for young people that do not want to engage in it because they still feel first, there's just low income earning, but second, it's a very high risk um, initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for that question. I think some really good points uh, that have come up. Uh, I suppose it's difficult for me to speak directly on behalf of development partners but we do know that development partners are focusing on, on some of these initiatives, particularly around agriculture as well. Um, and some of the things looking at um, uh, climate smart jobs, for example, looking at sustainability, uh, looking at agri-tech. So um, yes, there are risks and there needs to be an overhaul and perception um, issues addressed as well. But I think it's more about the business modeling of actual um, agri agri-sector work, um, skilling as well, um, or skills building, and looking at it from a business perspective and not looking at it as a sustenance um, model as well, and then matching the risks um, accordingly. But um, I would say that the development sector is looking, uh, looking strongly into this, and there are some partners out there that, uh, that do focus on agriculture. Thank you once again, Ms. Smita, for joining us um, and for the great contribution. And before we move on, I would like to kindly remind you all to take a few seconds and to respond to the poll as we really want to co-create our ULEAD Summit 2022 with young people and with all of you as per our practice. And now I'm delighted to invite a fervid believer and supporter of African youth. Yesterday, he was with us during the Twitter space as we were discussing the AFCFTA ahead of today's continental launch. 
So I'm pleased to invite Mr. John Bosco Kalisa, Executive Director of the East African Business Council for his remarks. Mr. Kalisa, the floor is yours, welcome. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much, uh, um, Daji. I want to, first of all to commend and appreciate uh, the M M MSTCDC uh, training uh, for organizing this uh, twin launch uh, on the Youth Inclusion Report, as well as uh, Africa Under 40 CEOs Network. The SIM the SIM is a timeless SIM, uh, making the CFTA promises a reality for African youth. Uh, I want again to acknowledge and appreciate the support that has been accorded by different partners, um, GIZ, the support from uh, uh, ESC Secretariat, the support from the uh, African Continental uh, Free Trade Area Secretariat, my brother uh, Prudence and the, the SG, and all other partners that have uh, supported this initiative. Let me say, as you rightly put it, moderator, that uh, EABC uh, has been at the forefront taking the leading role in terms of uh, including youth in its activities. One, we do have our SME uh, advocacy agenda where we include youth and women in the annual EABC policy advocacy agenda. And that is a, a process that starts at the beginning of each year where trade-related issues are, are, are being scoped for the private sector players across ES partner states. So the youth and women have been given a, a prominent role uh, in this exercise where we generate issues that we table to, uh, to, the e to the ESC Secretariat as well as to the Council of the Ministers. So we are already engaging fully and involving the, the activities of the youth in our implementation agenda. Allow me also, uh, as I highlighted earlier that uh, EABC has been at the forefront in terms of providing uh, a substantial inputs in terms of uh, the regional ESC strategy on implementation of the continental free trade area. And as I highlighted, we realized that uh, when, when that strategy was being developed, and I want to thank the donor, the donors who funded that, uh, including UNECA and uh, Trademark, the EABC undertook a survey uh, to, uh, to understand what are the challenges, what are the opportunities provided under the CFTA. And we realized under that survey that almost 80% uh, of our women and youth have a limited knowledge understanding what the agreement offers. And I'm happy that URID now is taking a proactive role in terms of uh, uh, bringing this study to the limelight of the realities uh, that are uh, envisaged under the CFTA. That strongly echoes to our assessment and our survey that uh, there is a, a low level of participation of the youth in the, not only on the CFTA, but on regional integration agenda, the youth and women have not been brought into the, into the limelight. Uh, and uh, I realized that, uh, and as I mentioned that, uh, the CFTA is a game changer and a very unique in the, in the sense that they are giving youth and women a very prominent role in terms of the benefits, in terms of implementation, in terms of looking at the job creation aspect for the youth. So that is, that is very critical. So, but be, be, beyond that, as EABC, we have a dedicated uh, SME uh, desk already established. And I'm happy that URI team, we signed an MOU last year. And every day, every day, every time, the voices of our youth are taken into consideration in our program of advocacy, in our program of membership, our program of strategic engagement and leadership. The youth is very, is very critical and their voice, interests, and their aspirations are taken into consideration. Currently, EABC is developing an SME platform uh, funded by I ITC, and we'll have a phone app. And the purpose of this digital platform is to promote SMEs in the ESC region with emphasis, with emphasis on women and youth. 
and I will be launching that platform around uh, mid-May, and I will invite all the youth uh, who are here on this platform to uh, who are here to participate in the in the launch. We also have a partnership with the youth and women-led organization uh, across the, the region. And uh, this is really very important. So let me uh, quickly, uh, again, uh, move into my detailed remarks that uh, while all these uh, trade agreements, including CFTA, talk about the youth, there is, uh, there it is very important to guide the youth in terms of the sector that uh, will benefit from the CFTA. A study done by World Bank and a study done by UNCTAD eh, both confirm that those sector, those businesses that are involved in manufacturing, they are likely to benefit. General manufacturing sector, 60% of the, the sector that will benefit from the CFTA, it is those sector that adds value. And I see an opportunity now use for adding value to agriculture to respond to the question my my brother raised, how do we ensure we mitigate the risks involved in agriculture? And how do we ensure that the youth are able to add value in the agro processing industry? And that is very critical because the CFTA makes an emphasis in terms of value addition. And that's where we need to, as a region, as a continent, we need to add value in order to create jobs that are required by our growing population and the number from the report is very clear, 65% of our population is dominated largely by the youth. So, and we need to ensure that the youth generate the required jobs. Then that is very crit uh, critical in terms of value addition. Again, when we, uh, we, we did analysis, we looked at the barriers, uh, again, uh, through our working with International Trade Center, we looked at uh, six major barriers that uh, affect the youth. One, I highlighted it already, lack of access to assets and finance, that is very critical. Two, limited access to trade-related market information, that is very critical. Three, limited trade-related skills and administrative hurdles that do not favor young people. And that is also critical, we need to look at the uh, the adm administrative rules and regulation that uh, would favor and would uh, enhance the youth participation in the in the trade uh, in the trade agreements. The first one is unfavorable tax system and administra administration effects. The youth that are trading across border uh, that tend to face. How do we simplify taxes and other regulations to ensure that the youth are able to trade uh, across border? The last one that is very critical again is the issue of non-tariff barriers, uh, both that are related to standards, that are related to trading goods. So NTBs have been also a challenge that are, are critical in terms of uh, inhibiting the use to take advantage of the preferences, regional trade preferences. Uh, so are we, as EABC, we've come up with uh, uh, a number of solutions. A quick one is that uh, to address the high level of unemployment among youth and also address the issue of inequality and the poverty that is, uh, face, uh, 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 that is facing the youth, we need to ensure that we develop and strengthen our regional value chain. Our regional value chain are the critical in terms of the youth to get uh, employment, decent employment opportunities and the job creations. Access to finance, I don't want to labor on that. Uh, it has already been uh, highlighted and I'm happy that uh, the risk uh, mitigation or the risk uh, grant funds, uh, which is being spearheaded by the secretariat will address that issue. Then the service sector inclusion, we need to ensure that the use uh, in, involved and uh, in the service uh, uh, sector, especially transport, tourism and the logistics. Lastly, we need to create a favorable investment environment, trade and investment environment for the youth. We need to reduce those barriers that inhibit youth to participate in various uh, uh, trade-related opportunities. I want again to uh, put on record that uh, the work done by URID is in the right direction, and I want to congratulate 
and approach the URID team, read by Ivan and Moses. Thank you guys, you are doing a commendable job in the region and at the continental level. So as EABC, we commit ourselves to continue to work with you uh, to strengthen the youth inclusion agenda. Asantini, Shukran, Asant Sana. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalisa, and we extend our appreciation to the entire East African Business Council. So with these remarks, we can say that uh, the launch of the African Under 40 CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network is official, and we look forward to engaging with all of you. We are 38 minutes late, and I suggest that we advance towards the end of the program. But as our team members, we are now going to share our social media channels once again and the email please feel free to send your questions your comments um, and we are always happy and ready to discuss and engage with you once again please we are going to resend another time the poll i would like to stress the importance for all of you to take just a few seconds and select the theme that in your opinion should be the one guiding the ULIT summit 2022 and so with the remarks of um, Mr. Kalisa, last but not least, to complement the valuable insights shared by our distinguished guests, I am pleased to invite Mr. Edward Kwakwa, the Assistant Director General, Global Challenges and Partnership Sector at World Intellectual Property Organization. Uh, Mr. Edward, welcome, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Madam Moderator, or maybe it's Dajas, Daji Sotfa, if I may. Excellencies, distinguished participants, and I want to give a special shout out to the youth because I believe this is the week for the youth. Let me start by thanking the organizers of this event for the kind invitation extended to the World Intellectual Property Organization to provide some remarks on the critical role of intellectual property and innovation for African youth-led enterprises and startups. Allow me also to use this opportunity to congratulate all of you for the excellent work in, you've done various things. You've conducted and published a continental scoping study on youth inclusion in the AFCFTA. You've launched the Africa Under 40 CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network and you have unveiled the Independent Continental Youth Advisory Council on AFCFTA. These are all commendable initiatives. And from WIPO, I should say it's a very timely event because just this week, in fact, on Tuesday, April 26th, at WIPO in Geneva, together with our partners and stakeholders all around the world, we celebrated World Intellectual Property Day. And this year, the focus, the theme of World Intellectual Property Day was intellectual property and youth innovating for a better future. Intellectual property and the youth innovating for a better future. So as you can imagine, I am extremely pleased to be participating in this event because like all of you here, we at WIPO very strongly believe that the youth can no longer be ignored. In fact, the youth are too important to leave behind because many of the global challenges facing us today will require us to unlock the full innovative and creative potential of our youth. So distinguished participants, before delving into the substance of my remarks, and I promise you I won't be more than 10 minutes, which is roughly the amount of time I expected to be allocated. Please allow me to share a few reflections on the report which has been launched today. And I'm referring to the report, making the AFCFTA promises a reality for African youth. I was particularly struck by one of the study's findings, which highlighted the fact that millions of African youth, millions we are talking, quote, 
have been left out of the global village, end quote. And this is when it comes to digital connectivity. To think millions of African youth have been left out of the global village when it comes to digital connectivity. This is especially worrying considering that the world today is on the cusp of the fourth industrial revolution, which is primarily being driven by advances in digital technologies in fields such as artificial intelligence, blockchain, the metaverse, and more importantly, the lack of connectivity has had significant implications for the levels of youth awareness of the AFCFTA, given that the youth in many parts of the continent rely on digital technologies to access information. So I believe this lack of connectivity also impedes the ability of the youth to be meaningfully involved in the implementation of the AFCFTA in terms of cross-border trade and commerce and the exchange of ideas and knowledge. And this therefore is an area that we need to watch very closely. Having said that, I would like to offer a few considerations in respect of the critical role of intellectual property and innovation. And this is in support of the African youth led business. So first, I should like to inform you that under the leadership of WIPO's Director General, Darren Tang, we at WIPO believe in a new vision of intellectual property, where instead of viewing intellectual property exclusively as a legal right, we believe intellectual property is a powerful catalyst for jobs. It's a powerful catalyst for investments, for business growth, and ultimately for economic and social development of all countries. In this context, WIPO is working very diligently to develop and nurture a more inclusive intellectual property ecosystem that works for everyone everywhere. We want to ensure intellectual property is not just seen as the preserve of the developed or the Western countries, it belongs to every country everywhere. And for Africa in particular, this means this intellectual property ecosystem must, and I repeat, it must take into account Africa's youth, which according to the report comprises 65% of Africa's population therefore making it the world's youngest continent. Clearly, when it comes to the youth in Africa, we have a lot at stake given the demographics. So in this context, our collective challenge, I believe, is that we must do more to raise awareness about intellectual property with the African youth-led enterprises and startups. And it is precisely through fora such as these ones that we have today that we can raise this awareness. Simply put, now is the time for young people to switch on to intellectual property. And as you all know, there is currently an ongoing negotiation at the African continental free trade area in respect of the intellectual property protocol, which makes it even more important for the youth to make their voices heard in the process. So ladies and gentlemen, distinguished participants, the reason we must raise awareness about intellectual property with young people is simply because innovation today is the driving force which is fueling economic development in the knowledge economy. Countries and businesses around the globe are competing on the basis of knowledge-based products for which intellectual property is a key enabler. Therefore, it stands to reason 
that youth-led African businesses must start to take intellectual property seriously in order to be considered regionally as well as globally competitive. And I am pleased to report here that based on our World IP Day conversations and engagements we had just this week, this is in fact happening in countries such as South Africa, Cameroon, Senegal, Kenya, and Uganda, just to name a few. Several more African countries are of course involved, but I only mention these countries because we had young innovators from these countries come and present on panels at WIPO here in Geneva. Indeed, young innovators from these countries and many other African countries are stepping up to innovation challenges. They are using their energy and ingenuity. They are using their curiosity and creativity to steer a course towards a better future. So innovative, energetic, and creative minds are helping to drive the changes that we need to move to a more sustainable future on the continent. I'm happy to announce my organization in this regard has plenty to offer in terms of supporting and enabling legal and policy environment for young inventors, creators, and entrepreneurs to thrive. Just to give a few examples, in February this year, we welcomed in WIPO the first cohort of young professionals under what we call the WIPO Young Experts Program. And it included participants from different African countries together with participants from non-African countries. So these young professionals, what they will do is they'll spend two years at WIPO headquarters in Geneva to broaden their IP knowledge so as to become the IP leaders of tomorrow. And through this two-year program, we are hoping young and talented individuals will be groomed to not only understand the technical aspects of IP, but also to apply them in practice in order to make an impact in their countries and in their regions. We have several other programs. I'll mention just one more. We offer young IP practitioners an avenue to network with over 600 like-minded members and to benefit from training opportunities on IP and alternative dispute resolution through what we call the WIPO ADR Young Program. Again, this is for the youth. Membership of this program is free of charge and it's open to professionals under 40 years old who have a background in IP or in alternative dispute resolution. So distinguished participants, in conclusion, let me reiterate that WIPO recognizes that young people are in fact key agents of change. They are key agents of change and they can help to solve the present day challenges and build effective global partnerships that will shape our future. And that is why youth engagement is now an important focus of the organization's work, especially so within the sector we call the global challenges and partnerships sector. And I'm happy to announce I lead that sector dealing with youth engagement at WIPO. So through our new youth engagement activities, we hope to draw young people such as yourselves into the international IP debates and to show them how IP can support their endeavors to shape it into the world we want to live in, into the world you, the youth, want to live in. And undoubtedly, the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement is a game changer for the continent. It is a game changer for the continent. And it is our strong belief that WIPO and the intellectual property system can contribute meaningfully to also unlock the full potential of this agreement for the benefit 
of young people, especially in Africa. So I thank you for your attention. And Madam Moderator, I am available if there are any follow-up questions or comments. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for the remarks and for bringing into the conversation intellectual property. And we appreciate the awareness from the World Intellectually Property Organization to African Youth. I would like to invite our delegates to write down the questions, being we're almost one hour late. I'm very sad to inform that I'm about to close this conversation, but distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, African youth, it was my extreme pleasure moderating this continental launch on behalf of MS Training Center for Development Cooperation and the East African community, being the mother organizations of Unit Africa. I thank you all for being part of this fruitful conversation. I'm now inviting Madame Sarah Ezra Terry, Programs Director at MS Training Center for Development Cooperation for the closing remarks and once again thank you okay. perfect i hope you can hear me good evening good afternoon uh, to everyone good morning depending um, on where you are it's a great pleasure thank you so much for this invitation uh, to make the closing remarks um, ladies and gentlemen all protocols observed it's my pleasure um, as the programs director here at MSTCDC to make the closing remarks for this forum, which has been looking primarily at how um, youth can be um, engaging more um, um, centrally to the AFCFTA, but also to launch the um, Africa Under 40 um, uh, CEOs and Entrepreneurs Network. I'd like to congratulate everyone um, who has played a role in uh, both these two segments of this program in achieving and getting us to this uh, point. These are not uh, small uh, journeys, we can say, and uh, it brings much joy to be able to participate and witness in such. Um, in listening to the part that I was able to engage in, I think for me, one of the things we always have to come away from is what um, uh, our roles now, how do we move forward from here? So, you know, be it an individual, you know, the youth, the young woman, the man of the continent and or a friend of the continent, you know, civil society, development partners, private sector. We've heard a lot from the regional uh, um, as well um, economic um, uh, partners, but how do we, um, in terms of this uh, dialogue and what you've said, how do we move away from here at an individual level in your own space to be able to influence and move the discussion uh, further? Um, yeah, and at least from the MSTCDC end, I, I could say that we, um, along with the um, East Africa community, are committed to ensuring that uh, the relevant um, studies and researches such as this continue um, to come out. We continue to understand where the gaps are, but not only the gaps, but where the opportunities are and how we could be more involved in our own um, uh, development. Um, so as a center, which focuses primarily as well on um, research, we do commit to ensuring that we continue with such like studies and where even from here, it will lead to um, more areas of curiosity or inquiry that will follow that track and ensure that we work and bring that uh, uh, to your table. So please ensure if there are questions, if there are gaps, if there are things you feel that let's explore this some more. Uh, put them in the chat as what is asking for so that we can capture that and you know move with it. Uh, the second bit we can do is also provide this uh, social dialogue spaces where we uh, you know are intentional about raising awareness on issues that are affecting our future, but also fostering networks and being able to see you know people from all over the world you know writing in and saying you know where they're um, um, calling in or dialing in or listening in from. So we um, hope and will continue to ensure that these uh, social dialogue places, spaces continue and also to enhance them, the solidarity and camaraderie around our own uh, continent's development. Um, I think without um, spending too much time to just say that um, 
I thank you for everyone who has been able to participate. I, I know so far is pressed for time one hour over, but it's of the highest honor that even up until now, we've still got a magnitude of people um, here um, on our Zoom call, but also um, listening to us uh, on our live streams on social media. So thank you. Thank you to the uh, keynote speakers. Thank you to our partners, East Africa Bless. Community, ABC, GIZ, uh, AFCFTA Secretariat. Thank you to all you participants. Thank you also especially to Sonfa and the team behind you that I know is working frankly to make this um, uh, live and interesting. Thank you all. And um, I would like to invite you all then to um, engage with the report that has been launched. Um, the social media for you lead is on in terms of you know, getting also to understand more about this uh, CEO um, network. Um, and how you can also be further involved in that. And let's keep the conversation, um, not um, only here on Zoom, but let's take it out, let's take it out into um, the social media spaces and continue to engage up until the next time. So on behalf of MSTCDC and all the organizing partners, I'd like to um, welcome you into this dialogue space and thank you also for your patience up until this point and see you. Africa, Africa, eh, 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 so Mama Africa, 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 eh, eh, Africa, 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 Young men and women, we the pillars, we the future, here we are, let's join together, with ability to change communities, with love, with peace, to respond to how I need, to call for unity, Africa, hear me cry, never leave me, leave me alone, has a sea light in a brighter future, let's join hands for youth and women, let's join hands for youth and so women. Shariki magaribi kaskazini na kusini hata nakati twaje pamoja ili fanye nini 